Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Todd and this is Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. Today we're going to show you how to take the Traeger Little Tex and turn it into a completely different smoker. So stick around. Okay, as you can see, I got a little bit of hardware next to me and you're probably wondering what it's for. So, I found this gas exhaust tube. It's a uh, double, double wall, uh, insulated, um, and it just happens to be the same diameter of the Yoder exhaust stack. And so, many times while I'm cooking, and a lot of people have told me that it happens to them too, you're getting so close to the Traeger that smoke coming out of the stack gets right in your face and what I'm going to try to do is solve that problem by basically raising the exhaust side of that stack. If we get a little bit better performance out of it at the same time that's great. Um, there's probably a reason why a lot of smokers have uh, big large stacks and um, although the pellet grill is kind of a forced air design I'm sure this will benefit a little bit uh, by doing this. Not only that, it's going to make it look a lot, lot cooler. All right, some of the things that we're going to be using for this project is some, some uh, quad zero steel wool. Uh, you're going to need a drill with a uh, Phillips bit, some safety glasses, a Dremel with a cutoff wheel, um, some metal self-tappings, uh, sheet metal screws, a tape measure, uh, and then I'm going to use some ultra black sealant to make sure I don't get any leaks. Um, before I paint it, um, after I steel wool the uh, galvanized surface, I'm going to use a prep all pre-paint, a high temperature uh, rust-oleum uh, matte finish barbecue paint, and of course your favorite tasty beverage. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get rid of this rain cap. It's really not necessary. But what we have here is a little bracket that we got to get rid of. So we're going to get our safety glasses out and cut this off. Okay, now what we got here is a nice surface to uh, play with here. So as you can see, the inside of this uh, gas flue has a fitting, an inner, it's kind of a sleeve and it just fits perfectly over the top of this. It just, it's like it was meant to be. There's a little bit of play in it and I would take care of that once I get final fitment done with the metal self-tapping screws. So I like, I really like the way that fits. So what I'm going to do is uh, just do a quick little score right here because I want to measure how far it's going down. So it's going in about two inches. I'll go ahead and show you the label for reference. So you guys go buy yourself one. It's by Selkirk, and the model is an RV Type B gas vent, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's pretty nice. So it's just going to go on there just like that. Nice little slip fit. Looks really good. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and and drill the self-tapping metal screws in here to get an initial fit. I'm just going to slide this on. I'm going to go with the seam to the back so it looks a little bit more pretty. I'm just going to slide that on. Look at that. Just a perfect fit. All right. So now that I'm done test fitting it, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this gasket sealer. I'm just going to put a bead, just a little bead right around this. It's a tight fit, so I don't need much. And honestly, I don't think it's really going to leak too bad from here because of the press fit and the way it's designed. But you never know. I'm just going to, if you think of water and think about how water would flow, air is going to do the same thing, in this case smoke and heat. 
So it's going to take the path of least resistance, so you just want to make sure you help it out a little bit. Go ahead and slide that back on. A little twist. That looks beautiful. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and take the first metal self-tapping screw and work it in. I probably could have done this first, but uh, I like doing things the hard way. I'm going to give it a steel wool treatment. It is galvanized steel. Sometimes that could be tricky to paint. Next thing I got is some of this paint prep. Spray some of that on there. Just give it a nice wipe. Now some people might like it just like this, but I'm going to go ahead and spray it. Oh, that was the wrong can. All right, in order to preserve my camera, I'm going to spray this down and I'll get back to you. Okay, as you see, it's, uh, it's added a lot of height and a lot of personality to this trigger. So, it overhangs the top of the Traeger exhaust pipe by 2 inches, which give it a total additional height of 22 inches, and 68 inches from the floor to the top most part of this new stack extension. Um, not bad. You could always use a pipe clamp or rig up something on your own to uh, detach this uh, quickly. I went with more of a permanent solution. I used RTV silicone and self-tapping sheet metal screws to make that more of a permanent endeavor because I don't really plan on moving this. Now the rain cap that I discarded and the bracket that I cut off, you could always braise that back on the top and, or just put it up here when you're not using it uh, to keep the rain and critters out um, or rig up uh, you know, a little tin bucket or something just to put over the top of it. Really it's up to you. Um, I don't leave it out in the rain so I'll probably just Stick that on there when I'm not using it. I'm really glad that you're able to stop by today and watch me do this little modification to the Traeger, a little text. Be sure to comment down below. Tell me what you do to your Traeger to make it a better cooker. There's a lot of people that don't believe in pellet grills. I believe it's a well-rounded backyard when you have a pellet grill. Uh, it's like an outdoor oven. You can go to bed if you're smoking a brisket and wake up the next morning and it, it's like an outdoor oven and you don't have to keep putting wood on it. So if you like this modification, be sure to subscribe. Hit the bell and that way you'll get notified when we upload a new video. I've got a lot more planned with this Traeger. As it ages, I may try new modifications to try to improve its efficiency and maybe uh, sacrifice it a little bit for trying something that uh, may or may not work out well. But the only way you're gonna know when I do that is hit the bell so that you get updates. Be sure to follow the links down in the description if you're interested in any of the tools and supplies that I used here for modifying this trigger. Cheers.